Hello again, this is Jay from Coding for Journalists, and today we're going to go through a few examples of how to use CSS. Okay, so today I set up a project uh, with an example of, or two examples, of the military, U.S. military using animals as weapons. Uh, so there's a page about bats and a page about dolphins. And you can see on the right side, the text is very plain, uh, the index.html is very white, there's no content there. And on the bats, there's no styling at all, there at all. So that's going to be our mission today. And the first thing we want to do, if you take a look at the second line, it says bat bomb test, which is odd, but just forget that for a second. And look at the image tag on the left side, and you'll see that the alt text, A-L-T, says bat bomb text. So actually, this is an image, but because the image file isn't there and Thimble can't find it, uh, it's using the alternative text. And if you delete that alt text and then reset, you can see that it gives the broken image uh, sign on the right side because it can't find that bats.jpg, which is what it's looking for. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is upload bats.jpg in a folder called images. First, I'll put back in that alt tag real quick. So there it is. The alt tag now says bat bombs aftermath, which is an interesting picture. And the source expects an image called bats.jpg in a folder called images. And in Thimble, if you go to the left-hand menu and hit that green icon, you can do add folder. And we're going to add a folder called images. Then you can uh, go ahead and hit that green icon again and do upload a file. You can't upload a file. I have two uh, files handy enough on my desktop, bats.jpg and dolphins.jpg, which we'll both use for this project. You can't upload them directly to a folder, so you just put them in the main folder. And then once they're in there, you can click on that little arrow on the right and do move to and select images folder, and then it'll put them in there. So we'll put both uh, bats.jpg and dolphins.jpg in the images folder. Now on the right side of the screen, the image has appeared, and it's a burning, smoldering wreck of a warehouse that was a failed bat attack, which is what we want. And if you look at the image tag again, you can see that the source says images slash bats.jpg, showing us that it should be in that folder, just as it is. Alright, so now we'll look to add some style to the burning bat building. And one way to do this, there's a few ways to do it, but a common way is to go in the head section and add a style tag, an HTML tag called style. Actually, the style tag can be anywhere in the page, but it's common to put it up in the head section. And in CSS, you target an HTML element. You target one of the elements down below. So we'll start by targeting the body tag, which is the big overall tag. And if you set the background color, it'll change the background color of the entire page. So we'll set that to gray for starters. And then I also like to uh, sometimes just center everything on the page just to start. And an easy way to do that is to use text align and just justify everything centered to start. And then if you look down below, there's a P tag. Uh, which has headline, which has bat bombs. Now we want to make the headline bigger, so we'll use some tags to emphasize that headline. Uh, first we'll change the font size to extra extra large, and then we'll change the weight to bold, and then we'll also change the uh, the font itself, font family, to sans serif, so a font without those little feet. Now if you look on the right side of the screen, you can see that it did change that bat bombs title up top, but because we targeted the P tag, it's changed all of the p tags in the entire page. So if you scroll down, everything's been changed, which is not what we want. If we take another closer look at that p tag we were targeting, we can see it has a class called headline. So we can up in our CSS, we can change the p to dot headline. And now if we take another look on the right, we can see that just the headline has changed. Everything else is still small the way we want it. So now we know what the game is. We go down to our HTML and we find elements that we can add style to using our CSS. So we'll go dot caption and make the font size small. And then we'll do dot article for the article class. And we'll text align. We'll justify things to the left. And then to make it stand out a bit, we'll do font size uh, large, just to make it a bit bigger and easier to read. And then just to embrace this fiery theme we have going, um, let's take all the link tags, which are the A tags, and make them bright red. And you'll see that with one change, we've changed all the little links on the right side with one file sweep. And finally, the image looks a bit big. So let's target the image tag up in our CSS, and we can use the height attribute. And let's set the height at, say, 300 pixels, which looks about right if you look on the right side. So now you can compare the CSS and the final product and see what we've done with our code. Now we'll jump over to dolphins.html and we want to give it the same styling so that everything's consistent. In this project we only have two pages, but on a big project like Wikipedia or something you can imagine hundreds of pages with this same problem. So one way to do this is just to cut and paste the style tag 
from bats, which you've already done, and paste it right into dolphins. And then dolphins will have the same styling as bats, which is good. But if we wanted to change just one thing, let's say in dolphins we decided to change the font family from sans serif in the headline to, uh, say, cursive. That, of course, only changes things in the dolphins page. So now I have to jump back over to bats and change that as well. And you can imagine if, say, we had hundreds of pages, that's not a very good solution. There has to be a different way. So let's change it back to sans serif. And instead of inserting the CSS right in every single HTML file, we'll make a separate CSS file that will hold everything once, and we can change everything once and monitor everything from there. So that file will be called style.css, and I'll paste all of our CSS in that file. And if I go bat back to bats.html, I don't need those style tags anymore. Instead, I'm going to use something called a link tag. This will allow me to manage all of the CSS from a single file. And to make a link tab, you type in link for the tag, uh, you make sure that the browser knows that it's a style sheet using the REL attribute, and then you tell it using href, exactly like a link, the a tag, same way, href, you tell it where the CSS is. So in this case, it's in something called style.css. It could be in any name that you'd like. So once we close that off and we look at our page, as we finish off that tag and watch on the right side, you can see that all of our styling takes effect again even though all the CSS code is now in that style.css file. And what's great about this is, now we can go to a different file. We can go to dolphins.html, and instead of having all that code in there, we can cut it all out and just put in that same link uh, to that same style.css, and again, all the styling takes effect on the right side. So now both pages in our project are using the same style sheet. We only have two pages, but it could be hundreds if we wanted to. Now let's go back to our index.html, which will be the entry page for our project. First we'll start off by typing in a headline. Then we'll go open the head section and we'll add that same link tag to the style.css sheet that we used both in the bats and the dolphins pages. And as soon as we finish typing, you'll see that it takes effect on the right side, both on the headline and the two images and the gray background. Now just as we had in our bats page and our dolphins page, let's use this class article and make a paragraph with some article text. And here we'll just write a, a short few sentences introducing our warrior animals. So you may remember that index.html is the first page people come to in a folder or on a project. So in this case, they're going to come to index.html and we want to make sure they can click through to see our other two pages, which are bats.html and dolphins.html. So in this case, I'm going to use the A tag, the anchor tag we learned in HTML last week. And I'm going to surround not just text this time, like we did last week, but also the image as well. So you can see that I have a, a BR, a break return, and then I put bats below in text. And the entire thing is uh, inside of the A tag. So both the image and the word bats will be clickable to get to the bats page. And then I'll put it two more break returns to add a little bit of space. And I'll do exactly the same thing for the dolphins page. So ahref equals dolphins.html, so when they click it, that's where they'll go. And then I'll surround both the image, and I'll put a break return down there. And then I'll put the word dolphins to make it clickable. And then shut off the A tag. Now if you look at the HTML code, and you look closely at the image tags, you can see that they're class thumbnail. And that gives us another class to add style to. And we want to make these images a little bit different than the main images that appear on the pages. So we'll do dot thumbnail back in our CSS uh, to target this thumbnail class. And let's make the height about half of the height of the image tag up above. So we'll make it 150 pixels. So there's a trick also to give them rounded corners. So if we do border radius and put it at 50%, it'll round off and almost make them circular, as you can see on the right side. So now both the images and the little text below are clickable and linked to those respective pages. So as always, I hit publish and give it a little description so you and anyone else that remixes you will know what your project's about. Hit publish, and if you look at your final product, um, if you click on bats, either the image or the text below, it'll take you to the bat bomb page, and if we go back, and then try dolphins, if we click below, it'll take us to the dolphins page. And we're done, congratulations, we've completed another project. 
And as always, you want to take your URL from the top of the screen, and that's what you'll submit for your homework assignment. So I realize this was a bit long, but I really appreciate your attention, and I hope it was helpful. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next module.